what is the problem you're solving and how you're going to use this technology to fundamentally solve those problems, reduce the pain point and create value for your customers. Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North. I'm here at Web3 North. I'm here with Josh Siratan from the organizers uh, committee. Uh, maybe you should actually introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm, I'm Joshua Siratan and I'm uh, one of the founders of Web3 North and uh, the MC for today's activities. And uh, it's a first time event, uh, Web3 focused industry B2B uh, startups and the lot uh, for Canada and Ottawa. So why was it important to have this event in Ottawa, specifically in person, of course? Well, with Web3, a lot of it uh, right now in Canada, I would say, is policy and regulation. And being in the capital and having an event on the, on, in the capital about uh, Web3 will kind of make some noise um, towards the people who are making the decisions on how we can really tackle this innovation area of tech. Great, great, great. Yeah, absolutely. I agree, and I've done a video on this. I think it's fundamentally important uh, that we be having this, uh, these conversations here in the capital. And, and it's also a tech hub, Ottawa. People often forget that. So uh, maybe Web3 will be the third iteration of the, of the tech hub. Um, have any topics emerged today that were not on the program? Has any sort of trend line emerged in what you know, your panelists told you today? I don't know if I would say necessarily trend line, um, but again, you know, we talked a lot about the rules of the game. And some of the big challenges and obstacles is how you balance the rule to the game without stifling innovation. So that was one that was one topic that I would say came up over and over again. The other one is that Web3 is no different than Web2 um, in terms of startups and building their companies, which is what is the problem you're solving? and how you're going to use this technology to fundamentally solve those problems, reduce the pain point, and create value for your customers. Great. You told me just before the conference started that your objective, or one of them with this conference, was really to focus on deal-making. Could you give us a sense of what deal-making is like in Canada in 2023? When you say deal-making, could you elaborate a little bit on that? <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you to do that because I think this came from you. Uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, when you're looking at the numbers and the figures, from my personal point of view, I don't think Canada is doing as much as it could. I do think we're lagging and behind. We weren't even the, in the top 10 of the $3.8 billion I mentioned in the stat in the opening um, comments. Of, and of the 40, 48 font, new funds, we might have had some in there, but uh, in terms of countries and even Western countries, um, we don't stack in the top 10. Um, now again, in order for us to stack in the top ten, top 10, we have to include more things in that pool of analysis that a lot of times is not really Web3 companies. Okay, so maybe give us your top three. For Web3 companies yes. in Canada? Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I guess... I don't mean top three companies, I mean the top three things we need to do in order to rank more favorably. Oh, the order of, and rank more favorably is maybe not wait on wait and see what the U.S. is doing mm -hmm. um, for their regulation and policy. You know, we are a, a sovereign country and we could adjust our regulations to do cross-border activity because I do realize that it is important because that's the largest trading partner that we have. And generally speaking, for a Canadian tech startup to be successful, it has to reach a certain level of sales in the U.S. in general or be able to raise funding. But that doesn't mean we could not, you know, create some regulation and policy ahead of time to kind of help our companies get moving rather than playing catch up later. And as was mentioned here, you know, Ethereum was born in Canada. And for whatever reason, we've kind of started to lag. And so there's the policy and regulation component that we need to look at. We need sort of the federal funding and I would say even provincial funding, government funding in general in terms of grants and supporting uh, tech companies and, and innovation. Web3 is part of that innovation. There's a huge technology stack um, that is incorporated into Web3. And, you know, uh, one of the, the questions early on is why Ottawa, when, when policy and regulation didn't seem like the, the reason to have a Web3 conference here, well, this is still a telco hub. Ottawa is a telco hub. Every major telco has an office here. 
Every major tech company has an office here. Canada or Ottawa is an R&D hub in general, as well as a tech ecosystem. And so there's no reason not to have Web3 here. A lot of the players that are located in this hub, their parent companies have Web3 operations in other countries. And so really, if we're not going to be loud, if we're not going to get any, create any attention, how are we going to get any of that funding to be considered one of the innovation clusters and an important component to building the future? Mm. It is notable that the general manager or country manager for Coinbase comes from Shopify. I mean, that, that speaks to that, uh, that, that foundation that you were just talking about. Um, looking into the future, what are some of the mega trends, some of the milestones or events that you're following, and how do you think they will impact the Web3 space? I mean, for myself, uh, you know, I go to more, I'd say, broader type of tech events. Um, I don't usually go to very niche ones. There are a couple more on the investment side, but uh, for example, I go to Mobile World Congress, which is one of the largest tech um, conferences in the world. Um, started with telco, very telco focused, but is expanded into everything. Like when you go there, there's there's lots of startups doing all kinds of, they got quantum computing there, they got, yes, they have NFTs there. And uh, you know, they have all kinds of other stuff. And, and so like when I go to these conferences, it brings the whole world. And so like I like to go to the ones like Mobile World Congress, Web Summit, uh, Collision to a certain degree, but it's a little bit more Canadian focused, I'd say. Um, a real summit I went to earlier this year, which is again, you know, very Latin focused, um, Brazil especially. But even in terms of Brazil, like what they're doing with uh, with DeFi and FinTech, it's crazy. Like they're, they're so much further ahead, um, I would say, and their central banks are working with the the builders of fintech and and digital payments and all that kind of stuff. And even though it, it's not decent, the plan is not decentralized. They are still trying to tokenize their entire economy. Mm. Um, yeah, no problem. <laughs> um, so Blockchain North is the media partner or a media partner of this conference. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Um, why is it important to have a media or a media presence uh, focused on blockchain here in Canada? Because it's still a dirty word, as I mentioned earlier, and not blockchain specifically, but Web3, in which that was one of the ambitions of this conference, is to be able to have a conversation not just in Ottawa, but with non-tech companies and uh, industry and business leaders that are not in the Web3 community, to be able to have a real conversation about you know, how they could use the technology to improve whatever it is they need in their business. And, you know, unfortunately, Web3 and the subsequent terms, uh, buzz terms around it, you know, you can actually see people's um, twitch when you bring it up. You can see the body language change. It's like, oh, no, here we go. Hello, kitties. So, you know, it's really about normalizing Web3. We need uh, a media group that's not going to shy away from that and is not just going to focus on the hype term and, and sort of like the pinnacle of the buzz. So, you know, like, yes, FTX, everybody's all over that. But that's not the industry. That's uh, a piece of it. And so, like, if you extend that even further, it's like everything, like NFTs, when that was a, was a big thing. The metaverse, focusing on Facebook, when that's just the name of the company. The industrial metaverse is so fascinating, the amount of money that's, that's going to produce, the amount of value that's going to produce. Um, in, in Europe, they're all over it with their, with their telcos and with their manufacturing organizations and, and car companies and the lot so it's really about normalizing it and that you know fintech or sorry web3 is not a dirty word mm. nft is not a dirty word blockchain crypto all that stuff isn't these are use cases um, or you could say the output of underlining technologies which have a place in creating value for business Great. And finally, future plans. I mean, this was the first Web3 North. Will there be a second? Do you already have ideas? Anything other than this? You know, I, I have uh, tons of ideas um, for this. This was really the MVP, um, you know, for this event. Um, I think it's it's gone off uh, quite well. Our, our speakers, high quality, the interest, um, you know, like, you know, advocacy, education, and then being able to do business is what I think this has done. I mean, I've already heard people talking about investment and, and deals and stuff like that um, on the floor there. So I think we got a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, in terms of next year, you know, it's always more. 
you know, there are so many areas that we could have touched on. We didn't touch on, uh, we didn't touch too deeply on tokens. We didn't touch too deeply on chain analysis. You know, we didn't even touch the metaverse, which I'm a huge, huge fan of. And, uh, you know, I could create a whole, con I would love to just do a whole conference just on that. But again, it's not up to me. I have partners and stakeholders and like with Web3, it's all about the community. So the community is who votes. You know, so if the, if the community said, you know, it was a nice, it was a nice one-time event, then it's a one-time event. If the community is like, yeah, let's do it again next year, let's make it bigger, let's make it better, then uh, then we're gonna go for it. Well, we hope to be there if you do. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you, Josh. Thank you.